Hello, I'm Dr. Mike. Ticks can be found throughout the United States. It is important to understand that not all ticks are the same. There are actually hundreds of species of ticks. Many people are aware that Lyme disease is transmitted by a tick. However, this is only one of many diseases that can infect wild animals, as well as dogs, cats, and people. To learn more about ticks, we're going to visit with Dr. Michael Dryden, a professor of veterinary parasitology. Ticks are not insects. Ticks are arachnids, uh, which really makes a difference, you know, because we often use these products to control fleas and ticks. When you're dealing with ticks and, you know, the pets that we own, what we generally find is that ticks predominantly infest dogs. But you will find cats will also, in certain areas of the country, also be infested with ticks. And that can actually be very important because some of the diseases that are transmitted to cats can be lethal. Most of the ticks we deal with in the United States undergo what we call questing. They're going to crawl up on some blade of grass, shrub or bush, usually a few inches, maybe up to three feet off the ground, and basically extend their legs out in front of them and just wait for you to come by. When ticks get on uh, that dog or that cat. One of the first things they do is they actually excrete saliva onto the surface of the skin and that salivary proteins that this tick is extruding onto that skin contains a variety of substances and one of those is actually an anesthetic. So when they insert their mouth parts that dog or that cat doesn't even feel it uh, because of that anesthetic component to this. So often a dog could have several ticks or even a cat for that matter and not even be bothered by the presence of those ticks which is then is too late because within 24 to 48 hours, these ticks are going to be transmitting some infectious disease. That's why preventing tick attachment is so critical to prevent disease transmission. We're concerned about a variety of diseases and other issues that ticks cause our pets. One of those is just a local irritation factor. The fact that tick's going to be attached, once it does fall off or is removed, you're going to have an inflammatory response around the site of that tick bite. Um, in addition, if you get a lot of ticks on an animal, um, you can have some hair loss because the dogs or cats may actually start to try to self-groom themselves. In some really heavy infestations, since these ticks do suck blood, animals can end up with anemia, that is blood loss. And then ultimately also we're very concerned about the fact that we have a number, probably in excess of 15 different tick transmitted diseases that can affect dogs and cats and even people, like Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Ehrlichiosis, in fact several types of Ehrlichiosis transmitted to both dogs and cats and people. We also have Babesiosis as well, we have various Bartonella, so there's a whole list of various diseases out there that these ticks transmit. One of the common questions we're often asked is, you know, if I've got a tick on my dog, should I test that tick for disease? Should I test my dog for that tick transmitted disease? And I think it depends on where you live. Your veterinarian is going to be the best, most reliable source to make that determination whether we need to submit a blood sample or that tick uh, from your dog to have it analyzed to see if it actually is carrying one of these pathogens. If it's a short-haired dog and you're looking around the head, you're often going to see him you know, attached around the eyes, around the ears, or, or around the shoulders. If it's a long-haired dog, it may be difficult um, to see those ticks, you may have to just take the hair and, and part it against the lay of that hair and look for the presence of ticks and run your hands over the, over the surface of the dog's body and see if you can feel like a lump, which is actually the presence of that tick. Uh, but it can be difficult at times to do that. If you take your dog any place in the woods or brush or along hiking trails, uh, in most places in the United States today, you're going to encounter ticks. And so you can be very careful about that because they can be difficult uh, to sometimes identify and to see that they're there. Which means ultimately the best thing you've got to do is kind of a defensive strategy. And that is if you're going to take your dogs into these areas, make sure that you talk to your veterinarian about the most appropriate tick product to put on your dog ahead of time before you go out into those areas where your dogs are going to encounter these uh, ticks. When you look at tick control agents we have in the United States today, the best tick control products that we have are going to be purchased from your veterinarian. We have 10 different tick species in the United States. Your local veterinarian is in the best position to explain to you which specific tick product is going to be the most effective for your dog or for your cat in your given area of the United States. And that's important. And you really want to stay away from the over-the-counter type of products, uh, which we basically have been shown to not be that effective at least compared to the veterinary recommended products that we have today. To get good recommendations on what you need to do to protect the health of your pet, you need to see your local veterinarian. When it comes to ticks, prevention is so important. There are many products available, some that treat ticks and fleas. I do not recommend using over-the-counter products. It is very important that you ask your veterinarian what product they recommend specifically for your pet. I hope that this video has been helpful, and thanks for watching.